So as you guys have probably heard, there's a solar eclipse that will be happening on August 21st. And boy oh boy do we have the flat earthers jumping straight into this topic. I'd like to round for a few videos and I found one that has quite a decent amount of views. So I said to myself, well since a lot of people have seen this video, this is probably the best one to debunk. So here it is. So there's a lot of talk about eclipses lately. Due to the upcoming event of the August 21st solar eclipse. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon's shadow falls somewhere on the Earth's surface. A lunar eclipse is the opposite. This happens when the Earth's shadow falls on the moon. So he goes on to explain how eclipses work before he tries to debunk it. I'm sure you guys are well versed in your astronomy, so I'm going to skip this part. Feel free to head to the original video to watch the whole thing if you like. During the total solar eclipse taking place on August 21st, a strange occurrence is going to take place. During this particular eclipse, the shadow of the moon will be traveling from the west coast to the east coast. I don't know why you said in this particular eclipse, since for all solar eclipses, the shadow will travel from west to east. But whatever, let's keep going. In a short video, and I'll post this link below in the description, the question was posed to the Washington Post as to why. Many people are asking the question, why the shadow is going to be moving from the west to the east coast. Well, you see, there's a pretty simple explanation, really. The Earth is rotating counterclockwise as seen looking down at the North Pole. Normally, if we place the moon as being stationary, then it wouldn't make any sense for the shadow to be traveling from west to east. However, that is not the case. The moon itself is traveling in a counterclockwise direction around the Earth as well, as seen from above the North Pole. Well, actually, from the Earth's perspective, since we have a greater angular speed than that of the moon's orbit, it looks as if the moon is traveling from east to west, or clockwise as seen from above the North Pole. But for the purposes of this model, we we will look at it from an absolute perspective instead of a relative one. So the moon is traveling counterclockwise. Its tangent velocity is about 3400 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, the tangent velocity of the surface of the Earth during its rotation is about 1700 kilometers per hour. Now, these are just estimated values, so don't get too nitpicky about them. Anyway, we can imagine the sun as being stationary in this model since it's so far away, the light rays are parallel. Because the moon's tangent velocity is about double that of the Earth's surface, the moon casts a shadow that moves west to east during a solar eclipse. This animation was pulled from the Washington Post and is a pretty good illustration but I personally don't like it that much since they made the moon's angular speed much greater than the Earth's. I understand why they did this though as to not make it more complicated than needed to understand this concept. At this point, if you don't know how this model already works, you probably are confused. Stick, didn't you just say the moon is faster than the Earth? Well, let's take it a bit easy there. I'll clarify in just a bit. Now, I'm sure this flat earther here is going to think of something in an attempt to debunk this, so let's keep watching. A lady by the name of Sarah from the science department of the Washington Post is supposed to be answering four signs. However, once you take a closer, more critical look at some of the answers that were given, you will see exactly how convoluted these questions are. And then here he briefly summarizes what was said in that video. I'm going to skip that as well, but of course I'll have the link in the description for you guys. Well, wait a minute. What it sounds like to me is that this guy is trying to manipulate the data. Now, also according to the heliocentric model, yes, it's true that the moon does orbit around the sun. Okay, yes, the moon orbits around the sun, but what does that have to do with this? Somewhere around the speed of 2,288 miles per hour. I love how the speed in kilometers per hour is right in front of you in huge numbers, but you chose to put your attention on the smaller ones that tell you the speed in miles per hour. But no, I'm not here to complain about miles. A lot of you left comments in my previous videos going like, what the fuck do you have against miles? Guys, it's just a joke. Calm your memories. But the distance of the moon, according to the heliocentric model, is said to be right around 238,000 miles away from the Earth. And what does that have to do with what we're talking about? I'm sure you can make it relevant somehow if you just tried. So you brought up the velocity of the moon's orbit, and you brought up the distance between the moon and the Earth. So what? I want to hear you elaborate, but you're not going to do that, are you? Also, let's remember that the moon only orbits around the Earth once every 28 days. And now he shows us a visual on the solar eclipse. Again, I'm going to skip most of this explanation part and get straight to the problem he has with this model. That's the United States, and the shadow is coming from west to east. That's the Earth spinning around the same time. But what we're also told by the scientific community is that the moon is at a much greater distance. The moon is supposed to be 238,000 miles away. Again, please state the relevance. I mean, there actually is a good reason to bring up this point, but I don't think it works in your favor. And we're also told that the moon rotates, orbits, 
around the earth once every 28 days approximately so it shouldn't be traveling at the same amount of speed looking parallel to the earth you see that makes no sense on the heliocentric model because that's not what we're told right we're told that 24 hours the moon moves this way 24 hours moon still moving 24 hours boom boom Okay, I see your confusion, and this is actually a valid point to bring up. How is it that the moon's velocity has doubled the Earth's spin velocity, but yet the Earth rotates one revolution every 24 hours while the moon completes one orbit in 28 days? Obviously, looking at this, the moon velocity shouldn't be faster than the Earth's, right? Now, hold on a second. This all clears up once you learn the difference between the angular velocity and the tangent velocity. The angular velocity measures the rate of the angular position change over time. Meanwhile, the tangent velocity measures distance over time. In other words, the angular velocity deals with how fast an object can rotate around the center point as measured by its change in radians over time. The tangent velocity is distance over time. These two are very different and have different units. Two objects orbiting the same center point doesn't always result in one object having a both greater angular velocity and a greater tangent velocity compared to the other. You can see these are two individual properties. In the case of the moon, it has a lower angular velocity but a greater tangent velocity compared to the Earth's surface. So in other words, it orbits slower than the Earth spins but its absolute speed is greater. And this difference can be further exaggerated once you realize how far away the moon is from the Earth, 384,000 kilometers. This gives plenty of space for the moon to have a double tangent velocity compared to the Earth's surface and yet still have only one revolution every 28 days. When we're talking about a solar eclipse, we don't want to look at the angular velocity since the light rays are coming in parallel. Instead, what matters is, you guessed it, the absolute velocity. Or rather, the absolute velocity would just be a much more accurate fit to this model. So now that I've cleared that up, let's keep watching for a bit more before I show you some actual mathematical proof. So when he tries to sit here and say, yep, that's why it happens because of light comes from this side to that side and it's spinning the same time. No, that's inaccurate. Okay, here's a simple calculation to show how the moon can have double the absolute velocity but a much lower angular velocity. For this, we are going to use the arc length equation that you've all probably learned in high school. S is the length of the arc, R is the radius, while theta is the radians. For the purposes of this, we're just going to use the time span of one hour consistently throughout. Now, the moon's tangent velocity is about 3,683 kilometers per hour, as you showed yourself in the video earlier. So in one hour, the moon travels 3,683 kilometers. This is our arc length, so we can go ahead and plug it in there. Now, the other value we know is the radius. That is simply the distance between the moon and the Earth. So we plug in 384,400 kilometers. Now, we just divide 3,683 kilometers by 384,400 kilometers to get the radians in which the moon has traveled in an hour, which is about 0.0095. 58 radians. Let's store this number up for later. Moving on, we're going to do the same for the Earth's surface. The tangent velocity is half of the moon's, around 1,670 kilometers per hour. In an hour, it travels 1,670 kilometers, so we fill that in for s. Now, the radius is simply going to be the radius of the Earth, since we are assuming the center of the Earth to be the center point. This is a value of 6,371 kilometers. Now, we take 1,670 and divide it by 6,371 to get 0.2621 radians. This is the angle change per hour on the surface of the Earth. And we can double check this since 0.2621 radians is about 1 24th of 2 pi, which is the amount of radians in a full circle. Since there are 24 hours in a day, this is perfect. Now let's compare the values, shall we? In an hour, the moon travels 0.00958 radians, while the Earth travels 0.2621 radians. So we know that the Earth takes one day to make a revolution, while the moon takes 28 days to make an orbit. In other words, the moon is 28 times slower in its angular velocity compared to the Earth's surface. Let's see if it checks out. 0.2621, the radians that the Earth's surface travels in an hour, divided by 0.00958, the radians that the Moon travels in an hour, and the result is 27.359. Wow, how accurate. But here's the thing, the moon doesn't actually take 28 days to make a cycle. The actual non-simplified value is 27.32 days. Holy shit, that is exactly what is expected. And it all makes sense once you realize that it's the tangent velocity that matters, not the angular velocity, when we're looking at a solar eclipse. Here's a great simulation I found on the comment section of the original video made by Angelo. As you can see, even though the moon has a much lower angular velocity, its tangent velocity during the solar eclipse is greater. Notice how things are illustrated more to scale here, with the moon being extremely, extremely far away from the Earth. So now that that's been debunked, let's move on and hear what else this guy has to say. He's going to try to explain how a solar eclipse on a flat Earth model works, so that'll be fun. The sun and moon make a clockwise circuit around the face of the flat Earth. The sun moves slightly faster than the moon. Seeing as how the sun moves faster than the moon in this continuing circuit, 
Every now and then, the sun will overtake the moon and bypass it in the air and cast a shadow over sections on the face of the Earth. This temporary overlap causes what we know as an eclipse. So I'm just going to go ahead and point out a whole bunch of flaws I see with this model. First of all, what would you say causes a lunar eclipse? Sure, this model may somewhat explain how a solar eclipse works, but how would the Earth block the sunlight to the moon? On a flat disk, if the Earth is blocking the sunlight, then the moon would be positioned below the flat Earth, in which case it wouldn't be in our sight of view anymore. I would love to hear an explanation for that. Because the sun and moon are small and close, what happens here, here's what's going to happen, or what will work according to the eclipse. It's like the sun overlaps the moon there, and you see the shadow go from east to west as the sun overtakes the moon. Here's my second problem. In order for this model to work, we would have to assume that the moon is positioned below the sun. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to make the shadow. If this is the case, how is it possible that we can see the moon during the night? It is well known that the moon reflects the sun's light instead of producing its own light. If the moon is positioned below the sun on the other side of the earth, light would not be able to illuminate it in such a way that the viewers from earth would see it, unless you claim that the moon or sun changes in altitude frequently as to sometimes place the moon above the sun. However, that would be contradictory to the spotlight sun idea. You claim that in this model, the sun wouldn't be able to illuminate the other side of the earth at all. So how in this case can it illuminate the moon bright enough for us to see? What, the sun can't illuminate a piece of the earth that is of equal distance if not closer than the moon, but can illuminate the moon just fine? The the only way out of this is if you argue that the moon produces its own light, but then how do the moon phases occur? There's really no good explanation for any of these on the flat earth model. So please, stop trying to promote this frisbee earth fairy tale. And that's my time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I don't know when I'll revisit the flat earth since I've been talking about this quite often recently in my previous few videos. Anyway, enjoy the eclipse on August 21st if it goes by your house. I actually won't get to see it from where I live, so you guys will have to enjoy it for me. And I'll see you next week.